A Washington Post headline explains the situation perfectly. Quote, criticism of Harvard's president is growing some see race as a factor. In other words, you can't criticize gay without the Washington Post calling you a racist. There's an irony, of course. She couldn't criticize pro-Hamas demonstrators on Harvard's campus. Can you but not say here that it is also... against the code of conduct at Harvard? We embrace a commitment to free expression, even of views that are objectionable, offensive, hateful. It's when that speech crosses into conduct that violates our policies against bullying, harassment, Does that speech not cross that barrier? Does that speech not call for the genocide of... Went on to say, contact. Firing gay threatens the entire DEI premise to which Harvard's board holds so dear. DEI sees everything based on past racial oppression, unless it's against Jews. And it specifically excludes meritocracy and objective standards. That's how DEI gets to the results it gets to. Plagiarism is an objective standard that is supposed to be applied without regard to where you land, where you place in the diversity Olympics. These two thoughts are at odds. To help us on this, Shan Wu, former federal prosecutor, one of the top officials at the DOJ, now the world expert in defending college students. It's good to see you, sir, um, you. as always. You've seen these passages that were allegedly right. copied and, and looked at a lot of this. If this was an undergraduate student who had done these things and hired you as defense counsel, would you say, uh, we got a problem here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's very little understanding, mercy, or context given to college students that are accused of plagiarism. Lots of times, they will have cited material someplace else in the work, but they forget to do it here, or they paraphrase. And some of that, frankly, Leland, even though they may be at big name universities, poor training far down the line in really how you cite material. But there's no mercy for them. No mercy. Yeah. And, and look, she went to Phillips Exeter Academy. Right. She got her PhD at Harvard. This is a woman who's, who's been around the block a few times. Um, in your experience, is there a double standard now in what you're seeing in the way she's handled and the versus in the way that cases you've been involved in were handled? It, it certainly looks that way to me. Now, I wouldn't be able to agree with you that it's all because of DEI, but I would agree with you that when a person is powerful, well-established, there's often a double standard. She should be calling for a full review, not just of the most recent ones they did review, but all the way back to undergrad. It's just like you're saying. One of the worries I have as a defense counsel is if a student's accused of plagiarism on one paper, I want to know confidentially what are they going to find if they look at the other ones? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's not calling for that, right. although other people are doing it yeah. on their own. You say it's not because of DEI. Let me turn it around. If we are to concede that she was hired largely because of DEI, and there's a lot of reporting on that, that the board, and you've dealt with a lot of college boards, they hate to admit they were wrong, right? If you all of a sudden have to start applying objective standards to something that is inherently not objective, which is DEI, right. that causes them a problem. Well, it shouldn't, because the true answer to that is it's not that we made a mistake with the DEI concerns. It's that we made a mistake in not detecting something that was covered up, or now that's been revealed to us, we need or to do something up. about it. How, how much of this do you think is involved in money? Harvard's endowment, $50 billion. That's higher than the GDP of Jordan, Tunisia, Libya, and about 90 other countries in the world. Uh, obviously, it grows tax-free, thanks to the U.S. taxpayer. Is there, is there part of this that so long as there's not more donors that pull out, already we understand that about a billion dollars has pulled out, Bill Ackman being the most uh, significant of that, how much of this is based on her sort of financial performance, you think? Probably a lot. I mean, if she is a star fundraiser, it's kind of like what you see in sports when you see star athletes are cut a break if there's alleged misbehavior or even criminal conduct. If they are making the franchise run, then a lot of people want to find a way around that. And those sorts of businesses, I mean, universities are like, you know, multi-billion multi multi dollar, dollar entities. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Fareed Zakaria um, has been fairly outspoken on this, right. on this issue. We're going to play a clip from him on December 10th. A white man studying the American presidency does not have a prayer of getting tenure at a major history department in America today. Hiring for new academic positions now appears to center on the race and gender of the applicant. 
Are you seeing the pendulum swing back a little bit in more of a focus on fairness? In terms of plagiarism? No, no, just oh. in terms of how universities are dealing with individuals both in hiring and in discipline. Um, I, I think so. Uh, first of all, the, the DI question is very complex, and a lot of respect for Reed's point there. We've seen a little bit with uh, Asian students when they're yeah. applying. Uh, frankly, admissions counselors will say, look, you know, you're kind of out of luck here because you're race. I mean, obviously, the schools won't say that. So there is a problem with how you deal with this complex issue of taking account, into account diversity and past oppression with a swing of the pendulum against fairness now, where you start bending over backwards the wrong way. Um, I'm seeing more awareness of that, but it's all at different levels. I mean, there's the high school senior applying, and then there are professors, and presidents, yeah. And presidents, so it's, it's very different at each level. <laughs> it's good to see you, sir. You were the right guest for this. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.